A home theater can enhance your audio experience exponentially. However, you can get into home theater lingo with terms like Dolby Atmos, 5.1, 7.2, HDMI, DTSX, and you can get lost really quick. In this video, I'm going to be explaining everything you need to know about home theater audio. Welcome to Here for the Gear, and please be sure to click on subscribe and stay all the way to the end because there is a lot to cover, but I will be explaining it as straightforward and as simple as possible starting at the beginning. As TVs have gotten larger, their viewing experience has gotten clearer and better, but unfortunately their speakers have gone downhill. That's because they're getting a lot smaller. You have two options to improve the sound, either using a sound bar or a full surround sound system with a receiver and separate speakers. But how do these components interact? First thing, let's start with the surround sound formats. These are called codecs. There are three companies that make surround sound formats. Dolby and DTS are the two big ones, and Oro 3D just started a few years ago. Where these fall into place is when you look at a disc at the store, you will see the audio formats the movie is encoded in. Probably DTS HD along with DTS X, or Dolby Audio, and Dolby Atmos. And then there's a small handful that are starting to include Oro 3D. So the disc carries multiple formats, it just depends on what you're playing it on as to which one you would use. These formats come into play when you put the disc into your Blu-ray player, which does the decoding, and sends the signal to the receiver over an HDMI cable, which in turn sends it to your speakers. When you go to the store or online and look at the specs for a receiver, you will see numbers similar to 5.1, 7.2, 9.2, and so on. The first number is the number of speakers the receiver will drive, and the second number is the number of subwoofer outputs the receiver supports. So let's touch base on the speaker counts and how many you will need to experience the format you are trying to listen to. The foundation for a home theater is a 5.1 system. You start with the most important speaker, which is your center channel. This is where up to about 85% of your sound will originate, so you want to make sure it is a good speaker. And then you have your front left and front right, or your mains, and then your surround, which makes five channels. Then the subwoofer, also called the LFE, or low frequency effect channel, makes up for the 0.1. When you add the wide channels and a second sub, you are now at a 7.2 channel setup that gives you even more wraparound sound effects. It will also distribute bass more evenly as well. Now you can step up to a 9.2 channel system to allow front wide channels to be added, but we're still on the ground here. We can also add a third digit, which you will see occasionally as well, like a 9.2.2 system, which we're now experiencing Dolby Atmos or DTSX when we add height or ceiling channels. Or you can even go up to a 7.2.4. Now to get those two or four channels of Atmos speakers, you have three options. You can either put holes in your ceilings for flush mount speakers, you can get Atmos add-on speakers, which will sit on top of your existing towers and project upwards and simulate or reflect the sound. Or last, you can get Atmos enabled speakers, which actually have the Atmos add-on speakers built into them flush mount. There are even sound bars that have upward firing speakers to simulate Atmos effects. Really pretty cool. So back to the number of audio channels, if you add up a 7.2.4 channel Atmos system, that is 13 channels of audio you would need to move from your audio source to your receiver. How would you do that without losing any signal? Let's start at the beginning. The most basic cable is an analog RCA stereo cable. Remember, in a two-channel stereo, red is right and white is left. This is key so you don't get your channels reversed. These are used for connecting something basic like a record player, tape deck, CD player, or if you're using a micro jack, even an MP3 player. Some Blu-ray players support 5.1 or 7.1 analog audio out, which can also be used in conjunction with receivers that have 5.1 or 7.1 analog in. You will be getting true surround sound, but limited to 7.1 codecs. You will also need a cable for each one of those connections, so that's quite a bit of cables. So how do you reduce that? Well, then we can go down to digital coax. This will allow us to eliminate all of that mass of cables and go down to a single digital RCA cable. With digital coax, though, we're still limited to only 7.1 channels. Another connection that is equal to this is Toslink, Toss for Toshiba. Toslink is a fiber optic connection, which makes it immune to any kind of RF or radio frequency interference. It's a little more fragile in my opinion though, because they're usually made of plastic. Now to the king of cables, HDMI. 
HDMI, or High Definition Multimedia Interface, has been implemented into nearly any type of audio or video device imaginable since its introduction in 2002. And if it's not there, there's probably an adapter made so it can work with any device, all the way down to cell phones. HDMI has gone through several version changes over the years. The biggest for audio was from version 1.4 to 2.0, when it expanded from supporting 8 audio channels up to 32. While HDMI version 2 has been the standard since 2013, HDMI 2.1 is the newest version and started appearing in November 2017. HDMI 2.1 also has a class referred to as Ultra High Speed HDMI and is rated at up to 48 gigabits, which can carry 8K and is even capable of carrying 10K video. There are very few devices that use HDMI 2.1 to its full potential as of this very moment, but towards the end of the year, as 8K becomes more widely accepted, it will become more common on devices such as receivers and Blu-ray players, I'm sure. Because HDMI is so widely used, you will find more and more ports on the back of your receivers as well as your sound bars and TVs to input media sources. Now, where you may run into trouble is, remember, I said HDMI has been around since 2002. This can cause version conflicts with something known as HDCP, or High Bandwidth Digital Content Protection. 4K content is protected using this, and if any of the equipment in your chain does not support HDCP 2.2, you will hit a barrier and you will be downgraded to 1080 resolution, or your signal will simply stop and your screen will go black. So let's look at four scenarios involving HDCP. First one being you have your beautiful 4K TV, your AV receiver, which is pretty new, and your 4K Blu-ray player which you haven't had very long either. Your receiver in this scenario would do all your video switching, and all three pieces of equipment are HDCP 2.2 compliant, so everything works fine, no problem at all. Now let's throw a curve at scenario two. We have the same TV and 4K Blu-ray player. However, we have an older receiver that is not HDCP 2.2 compliant. We want to ensure that the 4K video gets to the TV, so we have to run an HDMI cable to the TV. This is getting the video and audio to the TV. Then we use a fiber optic cable to get the audio out of the TV to the receiver. Remember, as I mentioned earlier in the video, Toslink limits you to only 5.1 channel audio. But at this point, it might be your only option, unless your receiver has the feature mentioned in our next scenario. Scenario 3, we have our same 4K TV and 4K Blu-ray player. But now we have a sound bar. Now what we are going to use on the TV is an HDMI port with a special feature known as Audio Return Channel, or ARC. What it has the ability to do is allow for a two-way transmission to or from a soundbar or receiver. So the way it would work is you would be viewing the source on the TV, like Netflix, Hulu, or any other streaming service, and the audio signal portion will feed down through the ARC in channel on the soundbar or receiver to give you the audio. And then it works the other way around. You watch a 4K DVD, and now all you're needing is the video portion back since the audio signal would stop at the soundbar or receiver, and the video would pass to the TV. You don't have to use any special HDMI cable for the ARC function to work. One thing to also note is ARC is only limited to 5.1 channels. However, sources are now sending newer codecs like Dolby Atmos and DTSX over streaming services, which we know requires more channels. So how do we not lose those channels using this setup? The solution is eARC, or Enhanced Audio Return Channel, which has opened up the rest of these channels. Keep in mind, you will have to run an HDMI 2.1 cable for eARC. It's only available on a handful of soundbars as of February 2019 via firmware updates. Okay, so we have one last scenario. Some medium to higher range models of 4K Blu-ray players have two HDMI ports on the back, so this might not apply to all. One port can say, Audio Only, what you can do is run an HDMI cable from here to your non-HDCP 2.2 receiver, and the other port on the Blu-ray player to an HDMI port on the TV for your video for full 4K video signal. You're pretty much using an internal splitter inside the device. They also make external splitters that do the same thing. This is just another workaround for HDCP. All right, I know that was a lot to take in. I hope you stuck around for the entirety of the video, and I hope this video helped fill in a little bit of the blanks that you had and it might have been unclear about with HDCB and all the stuff with the 4K and 8K and HDMI and all the other rigmarole out there. I hope you'll be uh, checking out some of my other videos, and I hope you subscribe to my channel on Here for the Gear. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.